Hey everybody, welcome to Comics from the Future. This is our show we do every single Friday where we preview and show you all the latest and greatest upcoming comics, variants from DC, Marvel, a ton of independent studios, and all that good stuff. So get ready for checking all that out. Uh, in case you don't know, my name is Megan. I'm Andy. And I'm Jason. We're with Infinity Flux Comics out of the lovely Chattanooga, Tennessee. That is right. We have been open a little more than six years now. We started our YouTube channel uh, almost a year ago, maybe a little bit more than a year ago now, but we've really gained steam lately, so thank you to everyone who uh, either watches us live or is subscribed to us on YouTube. We really appreciate it. We're reaching a thousand subscribers, which is awesome. So, all right, but we didn't get there by me talking about it. We got there by showing well, you some of comments. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> all right, well, let's go ahead and get right into it this week. First off is Infinite Frontier number one. So, uh, just a few months ago, we had Infinite Frontier. It was a one-shot, um, and I think a lot of people didn't know, but it was actually the beginning of this brand new event. It was kind of the setting the stage for what's to come in the DC Universe. We're now in this Infinite Frontier timeline and everything, but this is actually the event. So, this is by Joshua Williamson, and it picks up on a lot of the threads from the Infinite Frontier one-shot and then some of the stuff that has happened since then through the different books. So I believe this is going to be a six-issue miniseries. Um, and listen to an interview with Joshua Williamson, he said, yes, this is a miniseries, but it's actually kind of the first part in like a three-part um, epic story that's going to go and culminate in a big event next year. So this is really the place to get on board to find out what all the big stuff in DC is going to be happening. Um, I think this one is really cool, so I got a chance to read this one. It was in all black and white, so uh, it was still a work in progress. It, it will be colored. They just sent us yes. a preview version <laughs> yeah. of black and white. So I can't wait to experience it in its full form uh, in a few weeks. But this is really cool. So as you can see on the cover, we have uh, characters like... Uh, I believe it's named Calvin Harris, yep. the um, president, president Superman. Superman. Yep. Uh, and we have that team that was created at the end of the Infinite Frontier one shot that is um, Justice Incarnate. And their job is to basically oversee the multiverse. And now we have the Omniverse. And they're kind of in charge of keeping track of that, um, investigating any new planets that pop up or universes. So that's kind of where the story stems from and kind of what's going on with there. There is a, uh, a character that shows up on uh, his, President Superman's original Earth that's kind of a big surprise, very a la Superman's first appearance, um, setting off a mystery that involves the whole multiverse. Uh, we have Alan Scott, Green Lantern in this, and kind of... It's interesting because it seems like a lot of the characters, and not just superheroes, but the general populace, now knows about the multiverse. It says, you know, the multiverse is mainstream now. People are talking about this. Some people believe in it. Some people don't. But they're all kind of coming to terms with, like, maybe there's other versions of us out there and yeah, everything. You, you get to hear from Joe Normal on the street and, and some people <laughs> talking in a diner yeah. about if the multiverse exists or not. That, that was really It's a really interesting scene to see, like, what did just the average person think about it? But Alan Scott, um, you know, is kind of thrown into another mystery involving all that. There's just a lot of really cool characters in this. It seems like it's going to go really cool places. Um a lot of unexpected places, characters return that you're not expecting, characters take on different mantles that we haven't seen them do yet. There's a great final page cliffhanger that I thought was just super cool. I can't wait to see what happens with it. But I'm very excited about this. So like that um, one-shot story, we had a lot of people get it. We ordered a lot yeah. of them. A lot of people got it. And then everybody else came back the next week being like, do you have infinite frontier number zero because everyone heard how big of a thing it was and how much that was a launching point for a lot of stories that we're still seeing coming out so definitely definitely want to let your store know that this is something you're interested in um, because event books are really hard for stores to anticipate 
their popularity. And I think this is going to be a really big one. Yeah, Infinite Frontier Zero wasn't exactly an event book in uh, the typical way because it set up a lot of stuff that's happening now. Mm -hmm. Like Stargirl was in it, yeah. and now she's got a series. Yara Floor was leaving for Brazil. Now she's in Brazil. A-Day so, was yeah, A -Day featured in it, which is now like... You kind of need to read that to really understand all the stuff going on in Batman. We, Andy and I both read Infinite Frontier Zero twice because there was so <laughs> much in it. And I also read this, which they didn't actually send us all of it. They sent mm -hmm. us most of it. Because, for instance, look, there's Dark Side in the background. We didn't get to read the Dark Side part. Yep. I think they've kept some of the secrets even from us. Mm -hmm. So don't sleep on this. One other thing I want to add in is DC, because of Memorial Day, moved our orders up. Mm -hmm. That's all comic shops, meaning... Typically, we're drawing our numbers of what we order from this show. We already had the play set. So mm -hmm. did your shop. So did every shop. So I bet you this is going to be under-ordered. So you want to make yep. sure your shop knows that you want this now. Because if you wait for the day to come, I bet you shops have under-ordered it. Good point. Yep. Very good point. Yep. So there's a variant for this. Really awesome Brian Hitch variant with Alan Scott and his son, Obsidian, who ha has not really been seen even... I think he's made one appearance since New 52. So that's been since 2011 that we haven't haven't seen uh, Jaden Obsidian, Alan Scott's kids, and they play a major role in this story. So really, really cool. Really getting back to some classic DC stuff. The next up, to kind of go right along with it, we have uh, Infinite Frontier Secret Files. This is a one-shot. It was originally released digitally as little chapters, but they're collecting it all here in a $9.99 one-shot that uh, is, takes one of the characters from Infinite Frontier, which is um, Director Bones, the skeleton head leader of the DEA, and you're kind of going through his, his dossier files, and it's really to catch you up on a lot of these characters that a lot of people probably haven't read about before, like Jade and Obsidian, um, like Psycho Pirate, who may feature in this, President Superman. So I think this, especially if you are not super familiar with maybe even like pre-New 52 characters or just want a good refresher, this is going to have original stories that are really going to help you set the stage for reading Infinite Frontier right afterwards. All right, this is one I know people have been asking about and excited about, be mainly, I think, because of this cover It's and its mysterious title. So this is Batman Reptilian. This is going to be a six-part miniseries written by Garth Ennis with art by Liam Sharp. So you know Garth Ennis is writing. This is going to be dark. It's going to be suspenseful. It's going to be a little bit, uh, it seems a little bit horror-esque. So... Really interesting. The premise is that there is a new villain who is causing other villains to causing villains to kill other villains. So the villains are pitted against each other. Um, it seems like they are accessing a part of their reptilian brain. So I think that's part of where that reptilian title is coming from. Uh, Batman is also acting very different. He is a lot darker. He is, can you imagine is Batman <laughs> darker? What? Uh, he's just a little more scary. He's just a shadow. <laughs> yeah. Just a little scarier than we typically see him. So this is going to be a really interesting miniseries. It's going to take on some of that. So this is the A cover by Liam Sharp, our main artist. And then this is the C cover. Really cool. This is the Cully Hamner variant. So we got to read a preview of this as well. And I have to say, the art style is straight up 1990s, sort of like... Uh, Sam Keith Batman mm -hmm. art style. So if you were a fan of that, you'll you'll like it for for that reason. Um, also, Batman, as far as he he is scary, creepy, crazy. Um, he's like the monster under your bed in this, except mm. he's supposed to be kind of a good guy too. Uh, he basically threatens to kill someone by telling them how many times in a row I would never kill you. It's <laughs> it's stuff like that. So. <laughs> It's a very nightmarish. Yeah, it, it's it's freaky. It's not mm -hmm. like any Batman I've ever read. I love this cover too, just the, the eye. Yeah. But it makes me think, what, is, what does Batman look like on a log under a heat lamp? Like, <laughs> like in a pet store. But I'm, I'm excited about this one. I I looked at the art too, and it's art an art style that you just do not get no. anymore. Yeah. It's very interesting. 
All right, also from DC, they're starting up a new series called Checkmate. This is a six-part series by Brian Michael Bendis and Alex Aleve. They were the team behind Event Leviathan. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed Event Leviathan a lot. I thought it was some really good intrigue. This, I've gotten to read the first issue. You don't have to have read that at all. Um, Event Leviathan kind of set up the players for this, mm -hmm. but that had an ending. They, they figured out who the villain was. They took care of it. So what this is, is Green Arrow has put together sort of a super team of spies because Leviathan, this new group, they are more powerful and more secretive than Amanda Waller, than any other DC secret group. Basically, in Event Leviathan, they took them all out. Mm -hmm. And so even though the leader of Leviathan got kind of got beat down, uh, which he did escape, mm -hmm. um, Leviathan still lives on. So Green Hours put together this team Checkmate, which I think is one of the most interesting lineup team lineups. <laughs> Let's see, we got Lois Lane, we've got, um, what's her name, uh, Talia al Ghul, we got uh, Mr. Bones, we got Manhunter. Mr. Bones, he's getting to be in, yeah. in several things. We've got Steve Trevor, The Question, Robin. So just a lot of people you don't see together. I did get to read this as well. The dialogue is fantastic. It's been this at the top of his game. So I really enjoyed it. A lot of mysteries. You know, he starts all, all these mystery threads. Mm -hmm. I like he doesn't just go with one. There's multiples. Bendis also does a good thing where within the team... There's always disagreement, but it's interesting. He's good at remembering that just because they're heroes, they don't all have the same goals and the same way to go about things. And he always makes you wonder if all of them really are on the same team mm -hmm. or if anybody isn't quite working with, you know, there were some big reveals in Event Leviathan. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking forward to this. I think this is one to read if you want. If you like your superhero stuff with the side of really good intrigue, and here is the B cover by Matt Taylor. Very different looking. Pretty cool. Next up is, um, it feels like we're getting a lot of these characters over and over. Yeah. We just jump from a, a variant oh, with Green, Green Arrow. Arrow. They're really doing a lot with Green yeah, Arrow. Yeah. Uh, from what I can tell from just all of the stuff I've been reading lately, Green Arrow is about to have a big resurgence. It's been a while since we've seen him really in anything substantial um you know now he's back on the justice league him and black canary um he's gonna be in checkmate so of course it is his 80th anniversary so they are celebrating this with a hundred page um super spectacular that i got a chance to i didn't read it but i got a chance to skim through it this is super cool so this um brings back a lot of people who have worked on green arrow in the past a lot of writers and artists that have uh, taken them on over many, many years and kind of picked up on some of their story threads along the way, too. Some really notable things in this, there's a Jeff Lemire story uh, with Andrea Sorrentino, who a lot of people, first big Jeff Lemire thing they read was probably his run on Green Arrow that was super interesting, a whole new take on that. There's a story that in this that picks up that's almost like Green Arrow's final story. That's, that's what they call it. I think it's yeah. something like the final Green Arrow story. Yeah, so that one's super cool if you're a fan of that. I know there's one drawn by Phil Hester, who was the artist during uh, Archer's Quest. Um, there's a Black Canary story in this. Just so much cool stuff all around Green Arrow. And I know a lot of Green Arrow fans have been really hungry to get something. And I think this is going to be really cool just from all I see in it. And also the final story in it is super, it's sad, it's kind of heartwarming, but of course, uh, Denny O'Neill, one of the greatest writers of comics, has a, uh, a story in it written by, I believe, his son. Yeah, it's actually, a it's a tribute. Yeah, it's a tribute to him that doesn't have any words in it, but I feel like everyone will be talking about that story. It, it's it, it's really good. Andy and I both, I, I read this, he kind of skimmed through yeah. it. We both, that's the one we talked about. It was, it's really heartfelt. So I think that's going to be a, a very memorable thing. But there is a bunch of covers with this, like they do with all of the big anniversary things. So this is the A cover. This is the Dan Mora cover. 
Then we have the uh, 1940s Cho variant. Those classic ones, they always get me. Yeah, the, I, these I are always, always my favorites. Ones. And after people read, um, oh, which book was it that talks about him in the 1940s that we just talked about? Oh, um, oh uh, Infinite Frontier? No, there's, there's a book coming up that's... Uh, Super interesting that you find out why Green Air was around in the 1940s. Okay, I remember. We talked about that last show. Yeah. Right. Uh, then we have the 1950s cover. This is the Daniel Warren Johnson cover. I which, can't believe that's him. Like that's, yeah. I mean, it's, it's a good cover, but... It's so colorful, and it's... It, yeah. It's not it's not his normal style. But I love this, like, King Kong Green Yeah, that's Green exactly era. what I was thinking. Rampage. <laughs> <laughs> Then we have the, of course, That's 1960s Neil Adams. Neil Adams variant. Yeah. I feel like a lot of people want want to get this because that's the classic uh, Green Arrow, Green Lantern team up time that, frame. Ne yeah, Neil Adams was doing. Yeah, yep. he was doing the art during that. So, which of course there is some Green Lantern in yep. this, of course. So, I like the only thing that really is like we we both chose green as our colors. And <laughs> so they're like, okay, you two go together. <laughs> I love this one. This is the 1970s uh, Derek Chu variant with Black Canary on the cover. Then we have the 1980s Gary Frank cover, which is definitely uh, the uh, Longbow Hunter, yeah. Mike Grell era of mm -hmm. Green Arrow homage there, which is really cool. Then we have the 1990s. This is the Howard Porter variant. We bring uh, Arsenal in there. Then we have the 2000s Jen Bartel variant. That's cool. Very classic. And then the 2010s, this is the uh, Simone DeMio variant, which is kind of the uh, style of the rebirth era of Green Arrow. With that many good covers, I mean, just come on down to your local store and just tell <laughs> us all of them. So once again, I, I reiterate, all stores had to already place orders mm -hmm. on these. Which is a shame because, you know, what happens when 10 people want a cover we didn't think we need to get enough mm -hmm. of? Well, not all 10 of them get it. So at uh, nine ninety nine, no stores ordering like infinite amounts of these. Yeah. So definitely ask your store for the covers you want early um, because we're, we're going to, I mean, we got so many of each one just going, uh, maybe a yeah, few more of this yeah, one, yes. a few less of this one. There was no data to go on. So it's kind of first come, first serve. So yes. as fast as you can, tell your store which ones you want. There you go. All right, keeping it green. This is <laughs> Gamma Flight. I'm also drinking some green juice. So anyway, too much green going on. Um, this is Gamma Flight. It is going to be a five-part miniseries uh, spinning out of the Immortal Hulk by the same creative team as the Immortal Hulk with Al Ewing writing it. I'm always shocked that I can say his name, Al Ewing. It seems like it would be, I want to say e Ewing anyway. <laughs> Ewing. Pat myself on the back. Uh, anyway, this is about Gamma Flight. They were supposed to, in Immortal Hulk, um, they had one job. Go capture and stop the Immortal Hulk. And uh, they did not, they ended up siding with him. So this is going to be them as fugitives. So it's going to be interesting to see how they cope with that, how long they can survive that. So this is, like I said, Gamma Flight, same creative team as Immortal Hulk. And so like the natural progression, if you're, you know, Immortal Hulk's about to end, yes. you'll want to pick this one up to keep that going. Mm -hmm. So that was the A cover, and then we have the Kasara Stormbreakers variant. These Stormbreaker variants have been really popular. And then the Pacheo Connecting variant. All right, also from Marvel. I believe this is going to be the end of Heroes Reborn. I don't know if there's anything after this. This is called Heroes Return. It's a 56-page one-shot, so mm -hmm. pretty weighty. And in it, the Squadron Supreme goes up against the otherworldly form of the Avengers. Mm -hmm. What do I mean by otherworldly form? Well, look at the cover here. I'm not going to reveal everything in case you guys aren't up to date with Heroes Reborn, but Blade has been finding other people who realize reality isn't how it is in fact maybe that's the team he put together right there on the cover and they're going to go up against the squadron supreme i have to say having read all of heroes reborn so far the squadron supreme is so powerful i mean hyperion just he's like superman on steroids um the the wonder woman like 
woman. She just kicks everybody's butt. But Dr. Spectrum, if you read number four and you read his battle against Rocket Raccoon in space, like, I, I don't know how <laughs> they're going to take him out. I'm, I'm a firm believer Captain America could beat anyone. Mm-hmm. You know, like, if it really came down to him versus Galactus, he would win somehow. <laughs> but uh, it's a good thing they got the Phoenix on their side and Thor because... Man, they've built up Squadron mm-hmm. Supreme so so much. So I'm looking forward to this. 56 pages to resolve who is the better team mm-hmm. and hopefully fix reality. So that's the regular cover. Here is the Bagley connecting trading card variant. And then Looks like he gets out of that ice. <laughs> that happened pretty early <laughs> on, actually. And then here is the John Tyler Christopher action figure. So this is... Uh, this reality's version of Ronan, mm-hmm. because as you can see, it's T'Challa. So, and then we have Patrick Gleason's Stormbreaker variant. That's a really nice one. Yep, but it's showing something that would never happen because <laughs> Captain America would win. He he'd be playing dead. He'd play so, awesome. Yeah. <laughs> All right, next up we have Marvel Voices Pride. This is a one shot for Pride Month. June is Pride Month, and. A lot of places over the U.S. celebrate Pride Month in June. In our area, it actually celebrated in October. I'm not sure why, but uh, yeah, it's 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 a whole year-long celebration for a lot of people, but the main month is June. So this is going to be an 88-page one-shot that features not only characters uh, that are LGBTQ, but also creators. So uh, as Marvel Voices has done with the past with their uh, Native American, and they've, they've done a couple more Voices mm-hmm. series at this point. Um, but it is to highlight characters and creators that aren't the mainstream voice of comics and just that you hear out there every single day. So this um, is going to be $9.99, and it is full of a bunch of different covers. So let's see them. This is the, that was the uh, main cover that you just saw. This mm-hmm. is the Anka variant. Then we have the Koi Pell variant, the, now I'm not going to say this right, Ganeshaw, Ganeshaw, Captain America, um, with his new series variant. Then we have the Jimenez, we have two here, this is the Jimenez, uh, America Chavez cover, and then the Wiccan and Hulkling cover, and then we have the Souza variant with armor, and the Varegi cover with North Star. I didn't count, but is that, I wonder if that's more covers than the Green Lantern. <laughs> and there are, there are actually even more. DC are competing. Yeah. There are actually even more covers with um, on Previews World if you want to go check them out. But anyway, I think it's cool that Marvel is doing this, and DC is also doing some Pride Month covers. Um, we have a lot of parents, a lot of um, people who read comics, and they try to get their friends or family members or somebody into comics, you know, and this could be a good gateway for them if they do identify, or if they just want to support something, you know. It's like, oh, hey, comics... They reach these communities too. Yeah, image, so. image does too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I think that's really cool. I definitely had some parents coming in and relatives being like, "I think my family member would like this. Let me get this for them." Next up is something that we've been talking about for a long time. A really it was, long time, yeah, yeah uh, <laughs> this is super cool. So this we finally have Spawn Universe number one. This is what it's all been leading to, what Todd McFarlane has just been shouting from the rooftops is going to be the biggest thing in comics. This is the uh, point where the Spawn books are going to branch off into multiple Spawn titles. So something big is going to happen in this. And this is a 64-page one-shot. And there's not a whole lot that we know about the story in it. We know kind of some of the books that are coming out of it. We have King Spawn, we have Gunslinger Spawn, um, but the main story of this is still pretty under wraps. Uh, I think it's going to be really cool. I think it's kind of made to be a good jumping on for point for people who maybe haven't read Spawn in a long time those or want to get into it. Those first 300 issues, you mean? Yeah, those first <laughs> 300 issues, they said no to, but finally they're deciding to get on board with it. Um, but I think it's super cool. Um, Spawn has been as big as ever um, with these since 300. I feel like this is the next big milestone in it. And some really awesome artists are working on this. we got Steven Segovia, Jim Chung, uh, Marcio Takara. So there, I, and I feel like a lot of these are names that are going to be 
going on into the separate books after this. So if you are interested in some of the uh, spin-off titles of Spawn, I think like this will be a really important thing to read to figure out why Spawn is going to be such a big deal going forward. Yeah, I think a lot of people don't know what to expect from this. Um, but as big a name as Todd McFarlane is, I think this is going to sell like gangbusters yeah. because no yeah. one knows what to expect and it's from him. Yeah. I mean, I'm very interested to see what is going to be in the number one. He knows comics. He knows how to yeah. craft an exciting issue, an exciting event. Yeah. So uh, there's a few variants for this. Interesting. Most of them, if not all of them, I believe are by um, J. Scott Campbell. Hmm. I, I, I noticed that. Yeah, so we have the... Uh, a bunch of multiple covers for him. Yeah, we have the uh, Gunslinger Spawn variant. He wants to confuse us and, and people online. Like, I want the Campbell cover. Well, which <laughs> one? Have fun figuring that the out. The one with the hat. Uh, and then, let's see. Uh, there is the um, Booth variant as well. And then, of course, there is a bunch of other covers. Um... And most of them, I believe all of these are by... C&D. Yeah, are by J. Scott, Scott Campbell. Campbell. But those images are not available yet, nope. so those will probably be under-ordered as well, and they're probably going to be really cool. Mm -hmm. And as our screen says, the F cover is by McFarlane. So mm -hmm. if you're a McFarlane collector, that one is not... It's going to be under-ordered, because yep. we don't know what it is. Yeah. So here's your, here's your notice on it. All right, so this is from Image Comics is vinyl number one this is a six-part miniseries by doug wagner and daniel hilliard we were lucky enough uh, when doug wagner was doing plastic the, the previous series that they did he stopped by our shop he did a signing he's a very very nice guy mm -hmm. i quite enjoyed plastic a lot of really good memorable covers from that well it seems like they're doing something a little in that vein again he's good at doing these horror serial killer comics so what is Vinyl about? It, it follows a serial killer named Walter who happens to have a best friend who's an FBI agent. Now, it doesn't say if the FBI agent knows this or not. That is left a mystery in the solicitation. But yeah. Walter's best friend's an FBI agent, and the FBI agent is captured by this female death cult who also happen to be sunflower farmers. Oh, wow. And I know that sounds weird, but if you ever see a sunflower when it dies, it's one of the most gruesome-looking plants. Mm, yeah. They really rot well, so I think the art, you, know, you can see the sunflowers in the background there. Yeah. So this death cult has taken his FBI friend away, and somehow he finds this out, and he heads down to try to save his friend. And it's sort of like, whose inner demons are worse, this death cult or this serial killer? <laughs> and that's the premise. I think it's a very solid premise. It also promises that uh, he heads into an underground labyrinth full of secrets and monsters. It has everything in it. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know if, judging by plastic, I don't know if it's going to be literal monsters. Mm -hmm. It may just be people. And I'll, I'll tell you, people you'd call a monster typically more scary than actual monsters. Yeah. So it does have this variant cover. Did you see that? Yeah. I love I love how it just switches. I know. Here, I gotta cool. do that again. So here he is, <laughs> and then all of a sudden. And I remember when Doug came. We, uh, I, I think the main character or his blow up doll girlfriend. That's the real story. That's if you read plastic, one of them was obsessed with donuts. So he had a bunch of donuts and the signing <laughs> and all that. So it was really fun. Yep. So I, I'm looking forward to this. I, I think this sounds like. Interesting read for the right sick-minded person. <laughs> Jason and I are on a diet, so you can tell why I'm thinking of donuts 24-7. <laughs> All right, Reptile. This is number two. Issue number one just released this last week. Of course, our main character has the ability to change into parts of themselves into a dinosaur. So this is the Ramos variant, issue number two. And really cool. You see some actual dinos in the background. <laughs> Yeah, I, I quite enjoyed issue number one. So, And I, I told everyone on my review of it on our Tuesday video that there are two new characters in it that are Reptile's cousins, and one of them displayed some powers. I can say it now. It's been a little bit long enough. People are just now hearing about that. I think it's just hit, like, the, the collector apps and such. Yeah. So I wouldn't sleep on that. You know, these, char these side characters with powers, like America Chavez's sister, 
that stuff heats up later That's on. It, especially young characters. Yeah. yeah. So, but beyond that, I thought it was a good read. Looks like maybe his parents might not be dead. He might be on a quest to locate his parents. Mm -hmm. Cool book. Next up is Darth Vader number 13. This is a tie-in with War of the Bounty Hunters, which a cover I never thought I would see is Vader fighting IG-88, but really excited about this one. Yeah. Um, this story so far has been super cool. It feels like every time there's an installment, we get some new something that's super cool. And the Vader series, every issue of that has had some really cool revelation about Vader's past or, you know, what his, what's going on inside of his mind, what his mission is. So even though this is part of a, uh, a crossover event, I mean, Vader stuff continues to be some of the best books on the shelf. And I've loved War of the Bounty Hunter so far. I'm, I'm really excited for the whole event to kick into gear. This one also has some really cool variant covers. So we have the Kirby Pride variant. And then we have the Sprouse Lucasfilm 50th Anniversary variant. All right, from Dark Horse, Black Hammer fans rejoice because this is the new ongoing Black Hammer series. Black Hammer Reborn by Jeff Lemire is going to be launching soon. It is set 20 years after the events of the original Black Hammer. Wow. Yeah, so Lucy, she of course, took up the mantle. Well, after taking it up, for some reason she's put it down. That's not to say she's passed it on. Apparently it's 20 years later and she hasn't used the hammer in years and years. In fact, her life hasn't gone quite as well as she hoped. Her, her job, she's not doing well with that. Her marriage is sort of in ruins. Just things aren't going well for her. So with her being a hero and having saved everyone, it seems like this is focused on can she now figure out what's wrong with herself and save herself. Mm -hmm. This is written by Jeff Lemire, so it sounds very much like his sort of thing. Very where, character driven. Yeah, very, very, exactly. And I bet we're going to have a lot of visitations from the old team. If it's called Black Hammer, I almost feel like eventually it's going to become a team book. Mm -hmm. So I can't wait to, to see what's going on in this. And it's been a while since we've actually got an official installment in Correct. the main Black Hammer. Yeah, and uh, Black Hammer, although I don't know how far in production anything is, it, the whole universe has mm -hmm. been optioned. So I think this is something to, to watch out for. But in the meantime, just it's a great read. Mm -hmm. And here is the B cover by Jeff Lemire himself. All right, this is Imogen of the Weirding Way. This is written by Mike Vignola and Christopher Golden with art by Peter Berting. Man, I used to be good at pronouncing things. Um, so it's, the, it's the diet. <laughs> um, so, yes, this is going to be a... One shot. Okay, I thought it was a mini series for a second, but it's just a one shot, um, and it is just three ninety nine. So this is going to see Imogen. She is well. Lots of refugees are fleeing the spread of Nazism, but they're going into a nearby forest, but they're not coming back. So Imogen has to figure out what's going on, and of course, meet a lot of horrors along the way. So this is the A cover for our one shot, and then the B cover the both Burger King variants. Yeah, and this is part of that kind of new Magnolia verse that they're that Dark Horse is really trying to expand on. That has stuff like, um, oh, uh, uh, the Skinner, the yeah, uh, yeah. the previous Kojikaru. one, yeah, yeah. Kojikaru, mm -hmm. the Skinner, and From Baltimore, and all of those. Mm -hmm. and I think this is cool. That I mean, they're really going all at it, building up this other. Parallel, yeah, the Outerverse, kind of the, not the Hellboy universe, but very similar. Mm -hmm. Next up is a super interesting one. This is Tales Told in Techno Horror. Um, this is from Black Mask, and it is a biennial? Is that twice a year? Yes. I, I believe so. That's the one I don't hear as often. <laughs> Uh, it blends uh, the best in horror subgenres in kind of a multi-story um, book that has stuff like Body Shock and Grindhouse Horror. Um, it's from the team that brought you Providence of Madness, which is another uh, 
for the Poppy Hour Black Mask series. So, sounds really interesting. I, it seems like everybody's jumping on the horror anthology wagon, mm -hmm. and it's all been really good so far. This one sounds really cool, especially with a cover like that. All right, on the opposite end of things, <laughs> <laughs> Sonic the Hedgehog is doing a 30th anniversary special. This is a 40-page book, so it's double size for just $8.99. There you see all the nice little Sonic characters on the cover. So just want everybody to know, if you're a Sonic fan, whether or not you're into the main series, you might want to pick this one up. These anniversary specials tend to just be their own thing mm -hmm. and just sort of celebrate over the years. Usually they bring on a lot of different creators known with it and you know, just a lot of nods to all the things that you like about mm -hmm. it. So once again, 40 pages, $8.99. All right, this is V.E. Schwab Extraordinary. You may recognize this because there was a kind of a zero issue one shot that came out a few weeks back that was only a dollar. Um, and if you don't know, V.E. Schwab is an author. That's their pen name. They write a New York Times best-selling series um, about vi it's the villain series, which honestly I read a little bit about it today. It sounds really cool. I might read that as well. So it's basically it's very comic book uh, prose, but it's a world where basically having superpowers doesn't make you a hero. And our main character here is uh, has the ability to foresee a person's death. And she can even foresee her own, and she keeps seeing the same person in it. So this is going to be an ongoing series. If you picked up that zero issue, liked it, this is a starting point for that. It's not going to be a dollar this time. It's three ninety nine, dollars ongoing series. So pretty cool premise by a proven author. So check it out. Next up, this is uh, the variant for Batman Superman number 19. This is the Greg Capullo variant, which is really cool that uh, we haven't seen much from Capullo since uh, Death Metal, but I love this cover. And this issue is uh, Superman and Batman teaming up with another universe's version of themselves. Um, counterparts going into a new strange universe that was created by uh, Autour. Autour. Io. Yeah, where he's trying to create his own utopia by mixing different parts of different universes into this thing, which probably will not be a utopia. <laughs> By a horrifying mismatch. <laughs> All right, so this is the Lee Bermejo variant for Detective Comics 1038. I'd say it's a great cover, but I've already said his name. It's Lee Bermejo. <laughs> yeah, that's what he does. So here we have on it, Batman is sort of at the knees of Mr. Worth. Mr. Worth is the big, super rich Mm -hmm. billionaire billionaire that they've retconned in <laughs> is a big deal in Gotham um, his daughter's been murdered and he thinks Batman might have done it this promises to have Batman hopefully so a couple issues ago the cover was Batman fighting him mm -hmm. and I wanted to see that fight the solicitation for this says Batman and Mr. Worth actually do get in some sort of battle involving a rocket launcher, <laughs> subterranean caverns, and lots of bloody knuckles. So they better have that battle in there for me. It's been a good story. It really has, but I feel like they, they launched that cover a little early because yeah. I wanted to see that fight. So, All right. This is doesn't look like the cover I remember, but it must be. This is Harley Quinn. This is the number four, the Derek Chu variant. And this is, what's happening in this issue is Harley's unlikely sidekick, Kevin, is put to the test against Hugo Strange while she is testing things out with Solomon Grundy. So that is the Derek Chu cover. That doesn't look right. That was, that was the Terry yeah. Dodson cover from a Dodson cover. different series. Yeah, that's not right. <laughs> this was an accidental slide accidental. to see if anyone's awake. Check Wake in up. with you. That's right. Wake up and go find the regular cover somewhere else because that's not it. This is the Harley Quinn Chris Anka uh, Pride Month variant. So sorry guys, we got the wrong cover in there for uh, the Derek. You know what Derek Chu stuff looks like, but Google Harley Quinn number four Derek Chu, and that's there. <laughs> Next up, this is Mr. Miracle, Source of Freedom number two, the Osio variant, who's the main artist on the series. I love the first issue of this. I'm already a Mr. Miracle fan. I love all the, the characters back in the day that didn't get the biggest spotlight. Um, but this one picks up from the big reveal at the end of the last one with a character who thinks that they uh, deserve the mantle of Mr. Miracle 
and they might actually kind of do, but uh, uh, Shiloh Norman has to go find the original Mr. Miracle, Thaddeus Brown, to help him deal with this. So, really cool. Love the first issue. I'm really excited about this next one. Here is the Francis Menopal variant cover for Robin number three. Like, take a look at this. I, I really think it's it's mm -hmm. very cool. Um, even just sort of the, the the thing they're doing with the color there, mm -hmm. you know, reminiscent of wings. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, it goes, goes really well with Robin, but he looks real different in a lot of other ways. He's getting ready for battle. So this issue, though, what it's going to be about, I can't wait to read it. Number two is so good. There's all this intrigue going on. There's all this killing going on, and this is part of the tournament, but not quite part of the tournament. I mean, if you read last issue, I mean, there really is a lot of killing going on, but it is Lazarus Island. Well, there's a little break from it, and Robin has to do the one thing he doesn't want to do amidst all the killing and intrigue, which is he has to try to act like a normal person having a good time at a beach party. <laughs> so... And this I, I, is the uh, this is Connor Hawk on the cover. Oh, who looks, is who is that makes even more sense to me. The, now. the kind of the, surprise the character. Wings. Yep. So I was like, did Robin Don a new thing? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So Connor Hawk actually, it looks like he's working with the League of Lazarus, mm -hmm. which is interesting, but it doesn't look like he's doing it of his own accord. Yeah. Um, but I'm really looking forward to this issue. Uh, that's who's on this. This is... Oh, this is it. So I just got thrown... So I looked at this earlier. It's, it looks like Flash. It, it looks, looks like, like a Flash, a flash cover. But no, this is Ruby Justice League number three. It is a version of Flash, just not... Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. normal Flash we know. I'm looking at a small screen, guys. Uh, anyway, <laughs> this is the uh, cover B for Ruby Justice League number three, the Simone DeMio variant. Next up, this is Teen Titans Academy number four. Um, and this is the variant cover. So really excited about, I mean, this whole series is super cool, but if you've read the last issue, um, where a certain three bat related students decide, um, they want to figure out who Red X is, um, uh, this is going to be their investigation of trying to figure out who Red X is. And apparently what they find is not great. It may not even be true, it says so. Mm. And then this is the Pride Month variant, really cool, with the Titans Tower. This is Wonder Woman number 774, the Joshua Middleton cover. He's, uh, you know, continuing on with that awesome style mm -hmm. that he does. Mm -hmm. Just um, dressing Wonder Woman a little different than we've seen her. Kind of looks like a tarot covers. card to me, a little bit. I, I can definitely see that. All right, now we're getting into some themed variants, a lot of what's coming up next. So this is Amazing Spider-Man 69, the Perel Spider-Man Villains variant, and we have Electro on the cover. Then we have Captain Marvel, number 29, the LaFuente variant. She's facing off against Vulture. Then we have Guardians of the Galaxy, number 15. This is the Pacheco Spider-Man Villains variant. And uh, I, I do want to say what's in this issue, because I don't know if people... Like, they're having a crossover, a, a mm -hmm. one issue, maybe two issue one. The Guardians actually run into S.W.O.R.D. Mm. Yeah, the X-Men space people, and they go up against them. Like, apparently S.W.O.R.D.'s like, what are you doing up here <laughs> in our territory? And they get in a fight, and Magneto is going to be involved as well. Cool. So, yeah, I just thought that's something probably a lot of people didn't know about. And then here is the Jimenez Pride Month variant of the same issue. All right, we've got the penultimate issue of Silk. Hard to believe. It's already closing in. Uh, number four of this five-part miniseries. This is the Cola Spider-Man Villains variant with Silk facing off against White Rabbit. Then we have, getting back into the Hellfire Gala, this is Sword number six. This is the Dodderman variant, the connecting, um, showing off their new fancy garb. Then we have the uh, character design variant that they've been doing for all those where you see kind of more of the characters on there. Then we have the Way of X. This is um, the just the A cover for that, I believe. 
and then the design variant. And then we have Wolverine number 13. I really like this one with X23. X23 is styling. Yeah. And the Pride Month variant with Dakin on that. All right, so this cover is awesome. I love like, it. Yeah. This, this really stands out. It's neat <laughs> when an artist can, can do something that stands out like this. This is Fantastic Four Life Story number two. This is the ACO variant, A-C-O. I don't know I if it's ACO. ACO? Yeah. So it's, the, it's not an artist I'm super familiar with, but I, I really like this cover a lot. This takes place in the 1970s. Of course, the first issue was the 60s. Every issue is going to show the Fantastic Four through a decade, but it's done in a little bit more of a realistic style, although they still have their powers and, yeah. and mm -hmm. all that. In this issue, uh, Susan Storm is supposed to take on a lot of social issues, while Reed Richards is still obsessed about his vision of the coming of Galactus. All right, this is Web of Spider-Man number two, the Albuquerque variant. Of course, this series is based on the attraction at Disneyland. So I forget what this stands for again. It's, it's in the engineering building or something. So this is, like I said, the variant for number two. This is Blue Flame number two. Uh, the variant for that, the Gorum. Oh, this is the A cover, the Gorum variant. And uh, I know, Jason, you read this one and you were did. pretty surprised I, by I'm looking forward to how the deep this two. was. Yeah. yeah, I feel like we're going to really get a good idea of the the big story. I, I don't think we've had more people ask for a vault comic than I this agree. one yeah. in a while. So, All right, so this is Stray Dogs number five. This is the final issue. This is the horror movie variant. I'm sure no one out there can guess what this one is. <laughs> this is probably the easiest one they've had. They've had some challenging covers. Yeah, that Demons one was... <laughs> the Demons one was tough. It's a deep dive. You know, it's funny. I think every year there's at least two Fridays that fall on the 13th. It just That just so happens, you know, mm -hmm. because there's so many weeks in the year. Um, and whatever happens, we always watch a horror movie. I mean, it's like just guaranteed. Hey, it's the Friday 13th this month. Yep. Gotta watch a horror <laughs> film. They're also doing a Stray Dogs number one third print. This comic has been blowing up. It has all of the facets that make me think it's going to get optioned. Mm -hmm. That's what I'll say. Um, it sounds like they're going to probably maybe even do another series after this. Yeah. It's been wildly popular. So this is a third print I wouldn't sleep on because the horror homages have been doing great. And obviously yep. we have Scream. Yep. Mm -hmm. So... All right, guys, here is some more. Batman Fortnite 0 point number three, second printing. We've had multiple printings of the one, two, now number three, second print. The series is still coming out. We just had issue four come out. So, yeah, you're probably going to want this if you've been getting the rest of them. It's the Snake Eyes versus Batman issue. But yet again, the orders have already been placed <laughs> on these because yep. it's Memorial Day weekend and DC orders were already due. Um, so... Not to say, if you if you buy with us, please go ahead and send us your orders. We always try to anticipate, but it's a, probably a first-come, first-served basis at this point. Yep. Next up is Electric Black. Uh, this is, so this originally came out um, quite a while ago, but now that they are being uh, scouts coming out through Lunar, they're re-putting out a lot of their stuff. So this is the second printing. And I didn't know much about this. I remember the title when it was coming out. But this is actually uh, about a cursed antique shop that uh, appears in different places in time and space and is kind of your uh, uh, twilight zone, like what's going to happen in each one of them when somebody gets lured into this antique shop. So I'm hoping one day we can be a cursed comic shop. People <laughs> gotta, get comics It only takes and... one book. It only takes one book to become a cursed store, so <laughs> we'll see. All right, so this is Radiant Black number three is going to third print. They've been doing all these covers of this style lately in their later printings, so here it is. Here's Shadecraft number three, second printing. I'm not surprised this is getting a second print. We had a ton of people sign up for it, still sold out. So definitely get this if you missed out or if you want to just collect up all the alternate printings. Then we have a trade coming out, probably one of the most popular of the tie-ins with King of Black, yeah. Gwenham versus Carnage. So this collects all of the issues for only fifteen ninety-nine. All right, so here's a big one. This is Star Wars Darth Vader by Charles Soule Omnibus. 
Um, I've said it, I'll say it again. Charles Soul Run on Vader was my favorite. Greg Pack is doing great. I know, you know I have to say, but I, I this his Charles Soul Run it was fantastic. I, I recommend it to anyone and everyone. Mm -hmm. And I, we've sold a lot of it because of that, and people have thanked me, actually. They've come <laughs> back and been like, thank you for recommending that. They're doing a hardcover omnibus. It has two different possible covers. It is $100. It collects all the issues. That's The series was issue 1 through 25 and the annual. So 100 bucks. This is the direct market variant, so sort of just the regular one. And then here is the Diodato variant it's really cool. of that. 624 pages for a hundred bucks. <laughs> so, and all good. Yeah. It's all good. That whole series was great. Yep. All right. This is Marvel Masterworks Tomb of Dracula. This was Marvel's longest running monster classic. I can't believe they haven't printed this before. Maybe they have in a different version, but this is Tomb of Dracula. It reprints from 1972 issues one through 11 and then material from Dracula Lives one and two. It's 280 pages, so definitely a huge classic. Um, if you never got a chance to read or check these out, it's really good stuff. So this is the main cover, and then we have the direct market. I really like these. I, I think they used to be called the library editions. They have the nice um, dust jacket with the gold foil around the edging, so it's really pretty. You're going to get your first appearance of Blade in this too, mm -hmm. of course. Yep. And I, I think... I wonder if Blade has more to do with this going back to print mm -hmm. than Dracula because yeah. of the fact they're doing more Blade. Stuff. Probably. So this is an interesting one. This is Breaker Onubus Volume 1. And what's significant about this is it's the first time that it was printed in English, I believe. This is right. a super popular manga series. It's Fo Korean. Korean, originally. yeah. And it follows... Uh, Shiyun Yi, a high school student who becomes the uh, kind of the trainee with a martial artist who is the rival to a secret martial arts society, but he doesn't know this and um, it's kind of a dark, shady past. So this is the first time it's uh, been put all together. It's 400 pages. Uh, it sounds very uh, like martial arts based. It gave me feelings of like uh, firepower and image uh, for only nineteen ninety nine. It's probably one of the uh, biggest books you can get for only $20. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's a deal. They're giving that away. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, that's our show today. Kind of a lighter one this week. Um, but thank you so much for watching it. Hope you have a fantastic Memorial Day weekend. But before we go, just wanted to say thank you again. If you have subscribed to our channel and if you have a second, do that real quick because we put out videos like this every single Friday where you can uh, place your orders with your local shops or with us to get open order uh, stuff. That's kind of why we started this show to help get a handle on how much stuff to order and to inform everybody so you don't have to wait for it to sell out. Yep. On YouTube, if you watch, thank you. We're just about to cross the threshold of 900 subscribers. <laughs> So that could be you, or you could help. So if you've been uh, lurking, watching our shows, you know, hit subscribe. Let, let's get up there. We're on our way to a thousand. Leave a comment and say I was number nine hundred. Th there we go. Do that. <laughs> so, all right. Well, thank you all very much, and uh, have a great rest of your weekend.